Hey folks, this is IOE and we're back with some more World of Tanks. As you can see, this is Alex the Assassin in his T92. This is a tier 9 game on Mononovka. Um, this is otherwise known as Kampanovka. So, yeah. Uh, this is an encounter battle though, so that should shake things up a little bit. Um, we are driving the brand new tier... Uh, bleh. Wow, I was going to say tier 9 for some reason, but... Obviously, this is a tier 8 scout tank. Um, this is a T92. The light tank version. Uh, not the giant gun wielding <laughs> artillery version. Of course, they can't name a, a light tank and a tank destroyer the exact same thing. But they can go ahead and, and name a scout tank and and, and uh, artillery the exact same thing. Yeah. So right off the bat, you can see Alex is pushing into a very, very aggressive position. Um, this only works if he doesn't get focused by a enemy artillery and the enemy team. Um, but apparently right now they're not really paying him much attention at all. That Lorraine obviously is, but, um, that Lorraine is not in a good position to be doing that. Though he does take a hit, he does get 2,000 spine damage off the bat. Um, and he actually is more or less stuck in this position. Now, if the LTTB were to come straight at him, he'd have problems. Um, and if he gets tracked out in the open, he's going to have problems. But it looks like everybody's just kind of going around him. Nice shot into the... Um, I'm guessing that actually went into the side of the turret, though. It did look like the gun was off the, the T-54 when he fired. Um, obviously, he'd enjoy if his team could take care of this guy. I'm actually going to bump that map up. So we can all see what's going on. And then he gets hit by artillery. So now he's frozen in place. And if these guys up on that ridge line were paying attention, he'd be getting shot up. But actually, they're not. And the 54 chooses that moment to not push up on him. So actually, he gets very lucky because of the uh, encompass of the enemy team. And now he's going to just push up into this and fire through bushes. And as long as he's firing through these bushes... More than likely, he's not going to get lit. Now, I don't think he's got six cents in this thing. Otherwise, at some point, he would have been lit up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so as long as he's not cresting the ridge when he fires, he should be able to shoot at these guys relatively okay. Um, and be able to uh, put shots on the guys without them actually knowing where these shots are coming from. Or, well, they know where the shots are coming from. They just won't be able to see him, thus won't be able to do anything about it, really. So he's still getting some spawning damage off. Um, as long as he's in this position, it means the enemy can't control the middle of the map, uh, which is really nice for his team. That means they can effectively push over here and continue this push down and know that none of these guys are sneaking around into flanking positions. They're all going to be right here. Uh, because of the fact if they were over here, we'd see them. Uh, Alpine Tiger apparently is deciding it needs to push up. Well, I mean, you know, free shots are free shots. We're going to take... Okay. Well, that's one way to kill a, an Alpine Tiger. Um, yeah. I, I mean, that... Uh, um, it was new. <laughs> so, uh, that poor guy... There wasn't much you could do about that. Um, Type 59 is pushing in. Nice decision to take cover behind the, the dead Centurion. So, as if he gets spotted from the hill, he's going to have some troubles. But obviously, there just isn't anyone left up on the hill. Um, and by taking cover behind the Centurion, he makes it so they can only shoot at his turret. And this thing's turret is quite small. He's gonna They're going to have a hard time hitting that. Now the LTTB does need to get taken care of in a little bit um, because it is currently doing a similar job that, as he was doing earlier where it's spawning more or less his entire team right now. Um, every time it pushes up that bridge line, it's going to light up all of his friendlies um, and that are back here. And yeah, okay, well, never mind. Somebody else takes care of it. I expected that um, you'd push down across here and and fire back at it or something like that but uh, this is about the time you want to be moving up there is the, the Yag tire is almost dead there's an STRV right here 
but you want to be getting back down here somewhere because there's an artillery piece down here somewhere that needs to get lit up. Um, and um, I would I would ignore this guy personally because um, your team's about to fall on him and he's going to die in a world of hurt. But yeah, yeah, that's why, that's why I tend to ignore those guys. Uh, we all know the T44 100s down here. That means we have uh, just a few seconds to get to the artillery pieces down here somewhere. And shoot it before. Nope, never mind. <laughs> we just get the spine damage. Oh no, wait, we did hit it. Look at that. We got some more experience because of the fact that we shot something that we had spotted. Now we know exactly where the T44 100 is. I'm not. Oh, he's typing. That's why. I'm like, I don't understand why he's driving in a straight line when the, the target's so obviously in another direction. It's because he was typing. <laughs> Whoa. That was almost, well, painful. Because there's no way that would have gone well for us. And good Gord, we almost got shot by the other guy. Well... That is a great job. Um, so I did want to show this off mostly because of the fact that uh, that spot in the middle of Malinovka is rarely used. Um, and if people do use it, they use it a lot like the, that LTTB where they just go all out on it and they don't hold back at all. If you are in a smaller tank like Alex's, you can po pop up over that ridge line and drop back down again and be perfectly safe. Um, it perfectly safe as relative. But anyways, um, two things to watch out for. If you're on this side, then you need to make sure that there isn't enemies that are going to try and pop up like that T-54 did. Um, and if there are, you either need to aggress on them really early after they get hit by a teammate or something like that. Or you need to, if you have a platoon, both of you need to aggress on them. Or the other thing, because the guy in this position, if he stays there, he will light up your entire team uh, and take be able to take pot shots. And just this is a really, really bad position for an enemy to be in. Uh, especially early in the game, they will destroy your team that way. Um, and if you're on this side, then you need to be watching for... Um, where does this side get shot from? Yeah, technically, you can watch out for guys here, but guys don't normally come here early on. It's a lot easier to get to this side than this side because of the fact that this space has guys right here normally, whereas this space doesn't tend to have guys here. They tend to be back farther. Um, we're in a spot where they can't actually aggress on you, whereas here they can definitely aggress on you. Um, and so this this side is a lot easier, though you might get shot up from the hill a little bit easier because it does see the hill a little bit better. Um, but either way, either side, you decide to sit on. Make sure you don't have any enemies behind you. If you do, you need to take them out as soon as you can. And whatever you do, don't crest that ridge more than you have to. And definitely don't hang around out there like the, that LTTB was doing. Um, if that LTTB had committed to attacking us early, this game could have ended completely differently. Uh, I don't know if our team would have been able to push all the way through their lines if they hadn't known exactly where all those tanks were as every step of the way, uh, which our spotting did. Whereas, um, yeah, obviously the enemy's spotting was a bit more haphazard. Uh, either way, it's a great game, and that is a beautiful location for scouting on Melanovka. The other great ones... Um, there's a bush down here on the field, which covers the entire enemy lines. Um, and if you're really aggressive, you can actually pop up into this bush at the very start of the game. And you'll see people all the way up here. Um, and on this side, you want to run up into, where is the bush? This bush right here. Um, you're just going to come streaking down from, you know, cap, whatever, and park up right in this bush. Now, it's not much of a bush, so don't get cocky. <laughs> from here, you'll be able to see the enemy lines as they travel. However, you're going to want to ditch this bush fairly early. It's only good for the first, you know, like 
30, 40 seconds of spotting. And then you need to get in down here. And then uh, from here, you're able to spot the guys up here. Uh, same for the other side. From here, this bush here, you want to work your way to this uh, rock outcropping. So you're able to spot the guys here. And those two locations are really, really powerful for scouting. As they completely lock down the enemy team as far as what, what movements they can make and what moves they can't make without your team absolutely destroying them. So yeah, um, thank you so much, Alex, for showing us a great example of scouting on Malinovka the fun way. <laughs> okay, uh, we're going to jump over and see his battle results. So, Ace Tank, or not Ace Tanker, first class badge, spotter, arson, that's not an arsonist, that's a demo expert. Um, fire for effect and patrol duty. These things are actually harder to come by than they feel like they ought to be because you have to be the only thing spotting six targets when they get hit. Um, if there's anyone else spotting those targets, you don't get that awesome credit, uh, credit. So yeah, that's annoying. Um, <laughs> wow, 1200 damage or 1200. Bleh. Me and talking today, it's because I just woke up, apparently. Um, 1,200 experience, more or less, uh, for only 1,500 damage show. But that is, of course, because of the 4,000 spying damage she did. Made a ton of cash. Um, this thing must be a big money maker, assuming you can get those spots off. And honestly, on most maps, you really can. So, I'm thinking about buying this, actually. Um, the more I see it, the more I think about buying it. But anyways, for right now, thank you so much, Alex, for sending this in. If you think this deserves an MVP, please hit the like button. If you want to see more of this kind of gameplay, then uh, subscribe. And if you don't like this kind of content for whatever reason, please hit the dislike button. And I'll thank, thank the patrons for they are amazing. And I'll see you all next time. This IOE throughout.